Welcome back to the show. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. Now, for anyone new to the show, what I do is I take stock requests or symbol requests that come through during the course of a week. It can be any symbol, uh, market, uh, index, sector, uh, industry group, or uh, or stock. And I'll give a full read on that, looking at multiple time frames, momentum, and trend uh, to give a feel for what a stock, what, what it looks like it can do. I'll go through the monthly, weekly, daily, and sometimes hourly. And, uh, and then what I like to do is at the beginning of each show, start out with a little lesson. And I'm going to start out with a lesson on swing trading today because I'm, um, I have a trend and momentum course out there uh, that I talk about, uh, but I am adding a swing trading module to that, and I figured it would be a good lead in to give you a feel for how I would trade uh, swing trade in multiple time frames. So let's go ahead and get into this lesson now. Okay, so I've got a chart of Google with a, uh, a daily chart on the right and a hourly chart on the left. And I have overlaid the zigzag. I, I do believe this is a good idea. Uh, especially when swing trading, I think it can really help. Now, I know I have referred to this as having the zigzag up as, as being training wheels for the trend. And maybe some people take offense, especially if they've been trading a long time. But Linda Rashke, who is one of the best traders that I, I know of, and uh, certainly built a huge reputation as a very successful uh, hedge fund manager, she has color coding on her charts to help with this sort of feel for whether we have a true reversal or not based on volatility or um, the average true range. And so this is sort of a version of that in the way that it is uh, set up. And um, I do, on the zigzag, I do change it to a factor of two. It comes by default at two and a half, so just so you're aware. All right, so let's just talk about Google. So we get a move to the upside, we make a new high, we make a higher high. That's kind of like, if we're swing trading, that's kind of like rule number one. We've got to make a higher high in price. All right. Now, second thing is for me, I want to see some confirmation in momentum. I want to see this MACD hitting a new high as well. And then thirdly, I want to make sure that green DI is confirming what I'm seeing in the MACD. So what that's doing is telling me it's not based on the close. It's also based on the strength between each bar. And that's what the green DI is showing. Now, there will be cases, especially if you're reversing a trend, where the ADX won't have, will not have kicked in yet. So for swing trading, I would say that, you know, uh, the ADX line is, in fact, um, it's not like it's not important, but it's a, it's a secondary indicator for me. If I have this and I have this, I'm okay with buying a pullback, all right? Now, we get this pullback to take place. Now, classic swing trading is the use of one time frame, and we have make a higher high, we do this, and we get a pullback, and we get a lower high, lower high, lower high, and maybe that was even a lower high too, I'm not sure. And then you make another lower high here, and when you take out the first time you make a... Uh, once you make a three to five bar pullback and then you take out the prior bars high, then you get long. You'd get long right here. So um, you could do that. You could trade that way as long as you have, you know, what we're seeing here. Now, what I like to do is go down to the smaller time frame. And while we're pulling back here, evaluate what this pullback is telling me. Because I have noticed over the years, I used to just trade off the higher time frame. And what I noticed, was there would be like this one would just barely go to a new high and then it would reverse back down and then turn back up. And I would be kind of disgusted with taking the loss and I'd go look for something else. And then I'd miss the actual move that took place. So I started, once I started looking at multiple time frames, um, and I was doing that on really smaller time frames, like interday time frames, I started to expand and look at the, uh, the daily with the hourly to see what it was telling me. And if we look at what's taken place here, this simple, this simple pullback here, was actually a lower high and a lower low on the hourly. So it came, it made a lower high, and then it made a lower low. Now, it did not make a second lower low. It only made a single lower high and a single uh, lower low. All right. So to me, that's defined as an ABC correction as opposed to a full fledged reversal, because if we made another lower high and another lower low, then you'd have to say that the trend has reversed. And now I need a full fledged reversal to get in on the uh, long side. But in this case, we really didn't have that. Now, that to me is a more bullish sign. 
okay? Um, the other thing that is attractive to me is when this was dropping here, the MACD was actually holding its signal line. You notice how we made a... Uh, a lower high where it tried to get back in the zone here and then came out and instead of making a, a new low, it actually uh, held that prior low, which is a good sign. But this is even more powerful that the MACD held. Now, um, if you notice what happened, we got uh, really quiet here for about two or three bars and then sort of kicked in coming back up through this moving average. To me, this is the aggressive entry um, coming back up. Now, that's confirming what we're seeing on this bar. We get a reversal and then we come back up and that's really at the same point. Right in here is the same point as this bar taking out that. The difference is that I have confirmation from the lower time frame that the trend is reversing back up. We've held this low, we're making a higher low in um, in a situation that couldn't turn the trend back to the to the uh, uh, to the downside. Now, a more conservative entry. Now, I want you to think about this. So, if you got that entry, uh, let's say it's 101 and a half, and your stop's going to go underneath this low. Let's call it 99. Uh, let's just make sure I'm doing this right. So, 99 and a half. Um, and our entry is 101 and a half, you're risking $2. That will work if you do this off of the uh, smaller time frame. If you do it off the higher time frame, I wouldn't really take this because we had like a gap down here and I'm not necessarily looking to do this. If I'm just looking at one chart, I probably wouldn't take this trade because it gapped down and it's it's an indecision bar. Yeah, I mean, everything looks good still, but I would probably make it take out this 102 and a half myself, all right? Now, if we go to the smaller time frame and we want a little bit more confirmation, we can make this reverse and come back up and then buy the next signal. The next signal would be the pinch play on this time frame. We make a lower high, lower high, lower high, and we get this to pinch in towards the signal line above the zero line now. Green DI is kicking in. I actually like this entry better than the one down here with this with the gap and everything. It's not, to me, it's not low price. I know this is, I'm paying more, I'm paying a higher price for this. It's about lower risk. I want a lower risk entry. So yeah, I'm paying up here to get in this, but by using the hourly, I can put the stop here. I'm really only risking a little over a dollar. And I know my target is right up around um, 108. And I'm gonna show the weekly chart and the reason why I would not treat this anything other than, this is a reversal pattern on the weekly. It's not a, it could be changing the trend, but I would be looking for a target up around 108 if I'm playing this as a swing trade. So that's how I would look at this. That's how I'd frame this out. And I'd use this time frame as the signal time frame, the pullback on this time frame, and the momentum on this time frame, and the trend on this time frame is the signal. This time frame is telling me what my entry can be, where I can get in, and how I define the risk. And I want to get in when this time frame is saying, it's ready to go. I don't want to jump the gun too early on this time frame. I want to get it in line with the higher time frame or this time frame. All right. When I have that, I usually get immediate movement in my favor. And if you're swing trading, the goal is to get in and get out and not spend a whole lot of time in this trade. Yeah, you could buy it back here and put a stop way down here and just hope for the best and that it turns around and then you would end up making the same amount of money. But you would have had to take a lot more risk in order to achieve that. So I don't want to buy on the way down. I want to wait for the lower time frame to trigger me in. And this was the best entry. Even though it was higher price, it was lower risk. So we do that. We can make it at least a two to one risk reward. I think that makes sense. Um, and you can play that trade that way with, uh, I think, a pretty high um, confidence level. Now, I would go to the higher time frame weekly to help me define and frame out how much room I have. If the room is up at 110, then I could look for a target up towards 110. So that's how I use these three time frames when I'm swing trading to try and help me define a move in a stock that might necessarily not, it really isn't in a position for a trend, but it could be in a position for a nice swing trade. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, individual symbols. 
Just briefly, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. Uh, the individual package has about two to three reports each week, plus a special video for that package, and you'll be enrolled in the trading course automatically. Uh, so go ahead and take a look if you're interested. Let's go ahead and get into the symbols. Okay, as we start with the symbols, I'm actually going to just go ahead and finish off this Google um, and uh, just give you a little read on it as well as finish up what we were just talking about in terms of the swing trading. So um, we had this, this was the pullback on the daily chart we were just talking about. We went up and, um, you know, we, the target again was right around that uh, 108, 109, this prior peak, which shows up as the swing on the uh, weekly chart. And um, I do like the improvement on a relative basis, but... Um, we don't really have that great a momentum condition, and we just got the MACD back to the zero line. So, um, you know, th there's not a lot of confirmation. Now, I do like what's going on on a monthly basis that with the MACD. It does look like it's trying to turn the corner, but we're about to hit the 18-month line. So do you see how this is not really in a position to really take off right now? This is going to be – if this is turning here, it's going to take time. It's going to evolve. It's not just going to skyrocket. Now um, – if you were looking to take another, if you notice, we got another pullback. But here's the problem with the trade now, I think. If you look at this, um, let me just draw this in a little bit better. If you notice, we just made a basically a double top here, even though this went to a higher high. So to me, that's divergence on a MACD basis. Uh, the other thing that really bugs me about this is that we went to a marginal new high and retraced. So I'm not a big fan of that pattern, especially now that we've rallied back up to the previous peak and towards the 18-month line. We're, we're getting a lot closer to the 18 months. So I don't like this as a swing trade now, even though this pullback actually looks pretty attractive. Zero line reversal with low ADX on the hourly. It just doesn't have the same look to it. I would probably pass. All right, let's go ahead and look at... Um, the DIA. I've been watching the uh, the Dow Jones and just a few things. Let's start with the monthly chart. So if you notice, we had a pretty strong move to the upside that carried through the 18 month. And then since that time, we've been walking along that line and holding it for the most part. I mean, you know, inner month, we've actually been below, but by the end of the month, it's it's gotten above for the most part. Uh, we've worked off the overbought condition on a um, MACD basis on the monthly. And while red is above green, they're both low. There's not really a lot of strength in um, in either side right now. But if you if you look at way this has set up on the uh, weekly chart, we made a strong enough move here to the upside that even though we've consolidated, the MACD is holding the zero line. I kind of like that. It shows that the strength to the upside was pretty good based on this. And even though we've consolidated now for two or three months, we're still holding that zero. So it's starting to look like a zero line reversal. I think if we can break this trend line here, we could see some follow through. Now, what I would prefer is if this actually pulls back first and then tries to attempt the breakout of the trend line, which would be, you know, something along these lines like that. Um, and the reason why is I don't like buying breaks of trend lines when we're overbought. Do you see how long of a run this has made? It's just not, to me, this isn't, even if we break the trend line, we probably pull back. It'd be, to me, it would be better if we pull back first and then take out the trend line and not be overbought when we do it. But I'm on the watch for this. Um, I know that the uh, relative strength has not been all that great recently. But if I start to look at this from a, a micro standpoint, you can sort of see this. But let's also look at, I want to look at a couple other things real quick. So the zigzag pattern was showing lower highs, lower highs, uh, and lower lows. And then look at this. We just pushed up and made a higher high. And now we've made a higher low. I think if we can come back up through here, that would be pretty bullish. Now, I like to go down to the daily chart and look at the same zigzag and see what's going on. Notice how we made a lower low here, but now we just made a higher high. If we can make a higher low and then turn this up, we've sh we've shifted the daily trend. And look at what the relative is doing on the daily chart. You see the improvement in the near term? So, uh, you know, in the near term, we've gotten a little overbought. I mean, it's a, it, it, we've got a little mini divergence in the RSI 5 daily. I mean, it just makes sense that this could come back to neutral and maybe set up this higher pivot low on uh, the daily chart. And I think that would be um, 
a very interesting setup if it did it the right way. So I'm still looking for a break of this little mini trend line from the zero line reversal. All right, let's look at NVS. But look at this breakout that has developed. And now, one of the things I noticed, because I went through every single healthcare stock uh, out there this week, and uh, a lot of improvement, especially in the pharmaceutical area. It's amazing how many of these stocks are showing a lot of strength. Look at how long this has been going on. Look at this on a monthly chart. You see this, how, how this keeps poking up into this area. Now, here's Here's what I say. I really want to see this finish the month like this. And I'm going to show you how um, I look for confirming evidence. So if we go to the weekly, I want to see. So again, I don't want to buy a breakout when we're overbought. You see how overbought this was? We had the big gap and then up move. So yeah, we're breaking out of this area at 95, but we're overbought on the weekly chart. So what I want to see is some kind of a consolidation that holds the breakout area. It's just more of a zone than anything. If it can bleed back a little bit, but if it makes a higher low here and kind of survives that, then I think we have a real breakout. Now, when you look at it from a standpoint of the monthly and the weekly, it, it, like if we close up above here, if you notice we had this spike here, spike here, kind of a spike here, another spike here, we haven't been able to close the month this way except this one time back in 2019. So I want to just point this out because if you're looking for this, um, you'll notice that in 2019, when we tried to break out, we did not make that higher low. Do you see what happened? It, it came down really hard. So the breakout level is up here somewhere. And instead of making a higher low and holding, it failed at it. All right. Same thing here. Tried to break out and failed at it. So what we really need is some form of a test and, pr and proof that it's that it's really uh, getting ready to go out of this area. So definitely a name to watch because this is as a low ADX condition that's been in place for six years. If it gets going, it could be a very, very big name. Okay, let's look at ALGM. So, I, you know, um, nice move to the upside, but this got pretty overbought. You see how far away this got from the uh, zero line on, an, on a... Um, MACD basis, and in the process of moving up, especially during this phase, look at what the daily chart did. So that's this, that's this period here. You see how this was moving up and trying to push higher, and you see how this was sort of dying, both of these were dying off. So even though this was pushing higher, we were, we were losing steam. And um, it, it looks to me like this wants to pull back uh, a little bit more, come a little bit closer to the 18 week. Um, I think there's pretty good support right around uh, 41, 42. Definitely a name to watch. I mean, a very, very strong move to the upside, but I just don't want to pay up for it. I want to get this a little bit closer to a support, probably around $40. Um, I think this is pretty interesting, this TMUS. So, um, Let's look at the weekly real quick. Uh, we, we made a move to the upside here, and we didn't really have a lot of strength on an ADX base. So I wanted to see what would happen as this corrected and consolidated. And if you notice during this phase, we've been making higher bottoms throughout. All right. In fact, we never really, we, every single low has been a higher low in this whole move on a weekly chart. Um, but if you notice what happened, the MACD actually made a lower low. This drop here got it close to the zero line and it made a lower low. This is a reverse divergence. And I think you can take a trend line break on this as a, uh, as a trading play to the upside and get back in a stock that needed to go through a correction phase and now I think could emerge out of this. So definitely something I would keep an eye on. Again, I like to look at the daily chart. If this can make a higher bottom first before attempting to break that trend line, I would like it a little bit more. Um, but if you're playing off the weekly, the daily doesn't necessarily matter. You're just going to have to live with a little uh, volatility or consolidation uh, before it goes. Um, okay, so uh, AutoNation is uh, attempting to break out of this nice base that it has on the monthly chart. Um, I don't really like... This reversal, so 
Do you see what I'm talking about? If we go back and look at the NVS, right? I was talking about breakout and then a test and see how it does. This is not really a great test of this. Now, it hasn't completely fallen apart, right? I mean, if we can emerge out of this and show some strength to the upside, I guess you could consider it, but it's not ideal. This is more of a V top look to it. And a MACD is already overrunning a little bit. Um, so my, my inclination is that this is going to probably end up forming a range between 150, uh, here and like 125, something like that. Like, you know, just kind of uh, form a trading range in the near term. And if there's no more distribution, then it eventually could break out. But you can see the spike high on the monthly bar, that candle with the big wick on it. There's, there's definitely some resistance up there in the near term. Uh, PAG. So this is a similar pattern, not quite as severe of a pullback. It didn't re-enter the breakout. So if I'm looking at which one of these I prefer, I would say it's this one I'm more interested in. Um, but at the same time, it's 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 something bothering me about this. It's almost like it's already made a pretty decent move. And um, I think if I were going to play this, I would not have a problem playing it, but I would play it off the weekly and the daily. And I would play it as a trading move and probably be a little bit tighter. You know, if this can break out out of this area, use this as my stop and then uh, look to take profits along the way, get this thing to a break even. Let's say this goes back up to this prior high, then I would probably go to a break even right away and see if it wants to continue higher. Um, but if I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it kind of tighter than I normally would. Um, if I really believe this was going to go, I would probably trade it off the weekly. And I'm, I don't know. I'm just not convinced of that. It already looks a little extended on the uh, monthly chart. Um, IBP. So this, I think, has some nice attributes to it. Uh, we had a, a downtrend in place uh, whether you use this trend line or whether you use that trend line, we broke that, we came back, and then we took this out to the upside. So no matter how you slice it, we have done a one, two, three back to the upside. That is confirmed by the fact that the 18 and the 40 are both rising. I like to have the moving averages confirm what I'm seeing in the price structure. And uh, we're definitely getting that confirmation. Now, there's a couple things that bother me a little bit. And that is, um, this was a pretty big red bar here off the top which caused this uh, sell-off to overrun a little bit. But we've already run up. We've already pulled back. We've tested this low on the daily chart. So let's just look. You see how this overran the zero line? So it came back. Now it's testing again. In this situation, I would probably want a little bit more confirmation and make it re-break out. And the reason is, is that this didn't have a pinch play here. This overran to the downside. It overran the moving average and it overran the zero line and it overran the signal line. Uh, green DI isn't holding or anything. So I want a little bit more confirmation if I'm going to play this. And again, I would play it more like a swing trade with all this resistance at 125. Now, it doesn't mean you can't make money between here and 125. You just got to make sure you've planned out the trade that way. Okay, ZBH, a lot of improvement in healthcare stocks, no doubt about that. We're uh, The interesting thing about this one is we have reversed this weekly trend. We've got the 18 above the 40, but now we're doing it above the 18-month. Uh, the 18-month is flattening out and trying to cup around. Now, the MACD being below zero here and the ADX being below 25 here tells me that this is probably going to take a little bit more work. It's going to be more of an evolution as opposed to, you know, we're going to V-bottom, which is essentially what this would do if it just kept going to the upside. I don't think that's very likely. I think this is going to take more time as this cups around. And um, I, I'd like to see green DI break out above 25 at a, at a bare minimum um, before I look to play a pullback or something like that. But a lot of improvement here. You can see it in the relative strength line keeps improving. Um, but we've got some resistance up here still to deal with. Um, RSG. So I think this is a classic example of a stock that could be viewed as a swing trade, but not viewed as a trend trade. Do you see this overrun on the monthly? Let's just go through this real quick. So uh, we got pretty deep pullback here, but it's holding support. I mean, the bigger trend is still up, but we've lost a lot of momentum. And um, 
You can even see that when it went to a new high here, we were losing momentum even prior to that. Now that's on a longer term chart, but it, it does lead me to believe that this is more like a trading range. When we go and look at the weekly, it's even more confirmed, I think, because uh, we've got a flat 18 and a flat 40. The 18 is below the 40. MACD is just getting back up here. Uh, Green DI hasn't even crossed above. That leads me to believe this 140 area is a problem. Now. When I go and look at this on a shorter time frame, look at what the daily looks like. We've got rising moving averages. We're making higher highs and higher lows. We had this last pullback to hold this support. Look at a rising ADX. Look at the MACD. Look at the pinch play. I mean, this is a playable trade here, this pullback, and playing it for a move back up um, to the next uh, target area, which is uh, essentially... Um, Let's just look at that number is right around 140 or something like that. So if you get in at the right price, 135, you risk a point or two to, to get a move up to 140, then it actually starts to make a little bit of sense. Uh, Nike. So Nike is interesting to me because we, we, I know we have a V bottom here, but this was a pretty strong move off this low. I think that there was a decent amount of support underneath, strong move to the upside, and it, it, the ADX is being affected by some of these uh, moves here, these lines. Um, but I think there's enough improvement in the momentum, especially when you look at the MACD and the way this is paused that this might want to go another leg to the upside. So um, this is not a bad looking little short term play. The reason why I'd call it short term is because this line is declining. To start a trend from here would be very difficult to do. We either have to push up and consolidate and pull back, or we need to consolidate more right now and let this moving average start to cup around. If that happens, then um, it could break out from this standpoint and get a better move. Um, so if you're going to do it, you got to look at it more like a trading play. There is some improvement on a relative basis that is holding. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. My contact information is listed. If you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.